I'm Mabel, 27 years old, juggling roles as both a housewife and an office worker with a defined position. My husband, Jack, is the same age as me. I have a husband who adored his mother too much, and a mother-in-law who likes to bully me as her hobby. Even though there were ups and downs in our marriage, we just celebrated our second year of being a married couple. I am proud of how well I have been able to endure, and work has become my relaxation time. Thanks to this, I have received promotion after promotion and have been promoted to higher positions, which is unusual for a woman. I am in the middle of a business trip, traveling all over Europe for business meetings. Right now, I am also in the middle of a very important meeting. Then something happened. As soon as the meeting started, my phone, set to silent mode, started vibrating. I thought it was an emergency call due to the two persistent incoming calls, so I checked my phone under my desk. The incoming call history is filled with my mother-in-law's name, Audrey. What in the world is going on? I hope nothing bad has happened. I was so surprised that I hurriedly decided to return the call. As I was able to leave the desk to return the call, I received another call from Audrey. Hello, Mabel, where are you right now? I tapped the call button on my phone, and at the same time, I heard a voice that sounded irritated. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have picked up this phone call, I muttered to myself. Hello, Audrey, how are you doing today? Is there something urgent? Why aren't you answering me? I just asked where you are, Mabel. I was annoyed by her arrogance as usual, but I was in the middle of an important meeting. I didn't want to prolong the call by talking back, so I asked, Sorry, didn't Jack tell you? I'm in a meeting on a business trip. Can I call you back as soon as I finish? I replied softly, to which she replied, Of course Jack told me. What are you doing, leaving your house and husband alone? Come back home immediately. Such a sudden and unreasonable demand, as usual. I'm sorry, Audrey, I am just in the middle of an important meeting, and I can't just. Then she interrupted me and said, You're so bossy even though you're just a wife of Jack. I don't care for your reasoning, just come back home at this instance. Today is a very important day. Do you understand me? Audrey said, growing frustrated. Ha, huh, today is an important day. Since Audrey, who was reluctant to tell me why she was looking for me to come home, I asked her why today was such an important day. We're going to celebrate my 60th birthday today, Audrey replied in a smug voice. As I recall, her birthday was planned to be celebrated at the end of the month. It was a surprise to me that it was today. To do it on a weekday during my business trip, my husband and I had told her that we found a nice restaurant and set up a table for her 60th birthday celebration. I was getting fed up with Audrey trying to bully me again. I thought that Audrey was getting meaner and meaner every year, tormenting me when she knew I was in the middle of important work. So I told her, as I said before, I'm on a business trip right now, so I can't come home right now. Oh, how funny because I called Jack earlier today, and he said he would take the day off from work for me. Also, all of the relatives will be there. Only you, Mabel, work, work, work. You're so cold. What do you think of your own husband's parents? If I let Audrey talk any longer, her sarcastic words would go on and on. Since I was still in the middle of the meeting, I couldn't stay on the phone with Audrey until the end. So I said, I'm sorry, but I can't go to your 60th birthday celebration no matter what you say, I informed her clearly. Audrey then stopped being sarcastic, took a deep breath, and said, well then, I won't recognize you as family at all. You don't have to come back home at all. It's a divorce. Jack was too good for you to begin with. All at once, without a pause for breath, Audrey threw horrible words at me. I was angry and upset with what she had said, but I didn't want to prolong the phone call with a rebuttal. So I said, oh yes, okay, okay, I'll talk to you when I get home. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid I have to leave. 
I said this in a simple manner. Then Audrey said, what's with that attitude? I told you not to come back. I'll talk to Jack myself. As she said those words, she hung up on me. Tired from dealing with my mother-in-law, I returned to the meeting with a sigh. After two days and several meetings, I finally made my way home. On the way home, I was so filled with anger and frustration towards my mother-in-law that I could not remember where I had gone or how I had gotten back home. As I opened the front door and called out, I heard, Welcome back, I heard my husband's voice, which sounded like he was exhausted. I took off my heels and went straight to the living room, leaving my luggage at the doorway to find a pile of cardboard boxes. Then I saw my sweaty husband duct taping the boxes. Oh, what's with the boxes? When I asked him, Jack told me that they were all of my belongings from Jack. I heard that Audrey had really held her 60th birthday celebration the day she called me without me. She told me that I, her daughter-in-law, had neglected Audrey's 60th birthday celebration and that she had been treated arrogantly by me over the phone. And so on after that, she even told all of the relatives that she was going to make me get a divorce from Jack and send me back to my parents' house because I was being such an old wife who was not worthy of her son. Thinking that this sounded like something my mother-in-law would do, I asked Jack, and then what happened? So your mother told you to get a divorce, and you agreed to it. No, I didn't exactly agree to it, but she told me to pack up your stuff, and I didn't have any other choice but to do so. What can I do about it? Jack stopped putting duct tape on the boxes and answered in a slurred voice. What does that mean? You didn't argue with your mother. Does that mean that you're okay with the idea of getting the divorce? Jack said that his father, Thomas, also told him, if Audrey gets in a bad mood, I'll have a hard time, so you better listen to what she has to say. So he readily accepted the divorce. What in the world is he doing accepting the divorce so easily? What is it with Jack's family? A father who is controlled by his wife and a son who adores and obeys his mother. No one seems to want to take my side. When I was dumbfounded and silent, he said, what my mother says is absolute. It's just until my mother's mood is back to normal and things cool down. Yes, it's just a sham. This divorce is a sham. I'll come for you when things cool down, he pleaded with me with begging eyes. I wanted Jack to use those eyes on his own mother. How is it that a big man like Jack is so seriously afraid of his mother? Oh my gosh, there is no way in saving you. I almost felt self-loathing, wondering what was so good about this person that I had married him. But then I thought, wait a minute, Maybe this is a good chance for me to think about it. Even if I stayed with Jack, Audrey would just continue to torment me and always corner me into getting a divorce from Jack. Then maybe I was very lucky to get a divorce from Jack without much trouble, and I have enough income to support one husband. Even if I have to live alone, I won't be lacking in anything. In an instant, I felt as if a fog cleared away in front of my eyes, metaphorically. To Jack, I said, fine, then yes, let's get a divorce. As soon as I told Jack that, I called Audrey. After three calls, hello, Audrey answered. So I replied, as you wish, we are getting a divorce. I told her quietly, Audrey, sounding as if she had been waiting for me, replied in a triumphant, bouncy voice, yes, please, please go away. Get out of Jack's house. You finally figured out that you're not good enough for Jack, didn't you? I am so relieved. Don't worry, I'll find Jack an obedient, pretty, and parent-friendly wife this time. I'm sure Jack will be in great demand. That's right, I'll take care of my son until he finds his next wife, so don't worry about that either. After finishing all the sarcasm she could think of, as if for the last time, I said to Audrey, well, don't misunderstand me, mother, I casually advised her. Audrey, who was in a good mood no matter what, said, well, aren't you a sore loser? Well, don't mind me. Oh yes, by the way, Mabel, 
I got the divorce papers from the city office and gave them to Jack, so don't forget to sign them. Without a word of farewell, she hung up the phone. Jack, who was listening to the conversation with Audrey, looked relieved. Is Jack stupid? By the way, honey, does your mother know that you are a full-time house husband? When I asked Jack, he replied, how can I tell her that? My mother lives for the fact that I'm a member of the elite and work for a major company. He talked back to me with a strong tone. Oh, that's right. Come to think of it, there were hints that he never told the truth to Audrey. Jack always wears a shabby sweatshirt at home, but when he goes out to meet Audrey, Jack goes out of his way to change into a suit. And during the day, he pretends that he is not at home when Audrey calls, giving her the impression that Jack is at work. Audrey said at her 60th birthday celebration that Jack is a kind son who takes time off from work just to attend her 60th birthday celebration and that, if it was his status, he would find a more obedient and prettier wife than me in no time. I am sure that such things will naturally come to light once we get divorced. But to Audrey, who thinks her son is omniscient and smart, Jack will never dare to say anything that would disappoint her in the future. I don't think Audrey would have the faintest idea that her elite son quit his job at the major company. In fact, Jack had quit his job about a year ago. Her elite son, who was a status symbol to Audrey, was now truly unemployed, a full-time house husband. Jack quit his job. Because he made a big mistake that resulted in a written apology, a demotion, and a pay cut, he probably didn't tell his mother about that incident. Though it seems that Jack was quite shocked to have fallen off the smooth sailing elite road. Since Audrey pampered and spoiled Jack, he was very weak and sensitive. When Jack had to write his report on the mistakes he made, he felt palpitations and nausea just trying to go to the office, and he couldn't even leave the house let alone go to work. At first, Jack called in to report absences and applied for paid holidays, but eventually, he stopped calling in, and the number of unauthorized absences increased, and then he got fired from his job. Now it seems that Jack has no intention of finding another job, and he was depending heavily on my income. Jack is still unable to tell Audrey this fact because he knew that Audrey will be very angry and upset with him if he told her. I am a little disappointed that I can't see how Audrey will react when she finds out about the situation after I leave. I'm sure she will probably be shocked to the point of having a stroke, though. However, it's not my problem anymore. Jack told me, this is just a cover to convince my mother, okay? He handed me the divorce papers, which I submitted immediately. Then I signed a contract for my new apartment and moved in as soon as possible. One month later, I received a phone call from my ex-mother-in-law Audrey, whom I thought I had cut ties with. I wondered what she wanted to see me about now, but I answered, what do you want from me now? Aren't you glad that you got rid of me? As I answered sarcastically, she replied, well, you're still the same. Just listen to me. Audrey began to talk to me in the same tone as usual. It was about Jack. After I left from the divorce, Audrey went to Jack's apartment several times to do household chores. But whenever she went there, Jack was just there hanging around in his room. There was no sign of him going to work. It didn't look like he was sick, so she asked me if I had any idea what was going on. I suppressed the urge to burst out laughing and replied, Hmm, I see. I replied nonchalantly, well, of course, he's like that because Jack has no intention of working at all, ever again. As if Audrey had forgotten that she was the one who had kicked me out, she asked, Mabel, can you do something about it? Why should I? You didn't want me to be in your family and wanted nothing to do with me. She was so selfish to ask me for something only when it suits her after having mistreated me for a very long time. Then she said, well, I was wondering if you said something to him, Jack, before you left. I wondered how much she wanted me as the bad guy. Does this person not think that there's a problem with her son and not me? Um, I'm the one who was hurt, you know. Oh really? 
You only married Jack because you could live a luxurious life with him, right? So what is so hurtful about getting divorced? Audrey looked at me as if I had married Jack for his money. She should quit sleep talking. Ha! Huh? You must be joking me. I was the one who supported Jack financially during our marriage. I was the one who provided for you. To tell you the truth, I couldn't afford to live extravagantly because of Jack. I was fine with a divorce, but shall I file Jack for alimony? Audrey couldn't believe what I said and said, how dare you? Making up something like that, Mabel. You just forgot to ask for the alimony, didn't you? Jack has a higher income and position than you. Don't be so unreasonable. If you just want money, Eric can pay whatever you want. After all, Jack is a super elite working for the major company. Audrey replied back with a crazy argument. Maybe Jack hasn't told Audrey the truth yet. If so, I didn't want to tell Audrey about what Jack is still hiding from her because it sounds like I'm just tattletaling. But it was a chance to see how Audrey would react when she found out about this situation. I thought it would be a good opportunity to get back at her. So I told her, your proud son's a full-time house husband. He quit his job a long time ago. What? You are lying. Sure enough, Audrey could not accept my words. She raised her voice so loudly that I thought she might tear my eardrums. I took my phone away from my ear for a bit and said, why don't you check with the company anyway? You'll know who is telling the truth. Audrey became silent for a moment. Well then, what if? What if? If that's true, how are we going to live? I can't take care of my son with just my pension, and no one will marry my son because he is unemployed. What are we going to do? Her voice was obviously toned down, and it was working. My face was starting to grin. What shall we do? Audrey was silent again for a moment, then babbled something back and forth with the person who was beside her. Then she said, Hey Mabel, will you please come home? I wondered what she was suddenly saying, but I said, No, we're already divorced. I wouldn't come back to your family if heaven and earth turned upside down. Then I heard someone near Audrey making a fuss. I told you that I would come get you back when things cooled down, I heard someone shouting. It seemed to be my ex-husband Jack's voice. Yes, yes, you could remarry my son again, you know. What are you talking about? No way, I wouldn't do it for the world. Don't joke about this, Mabel. Thank you, seriously, okay. I made sure to remind her not to regret it the last time we talked on the phone, and I don't want to be involved with a son who loves his mother too much or have any more toxic mother-in-law relationships ever again. I did what you told me to do, so could you please stop changing your mind so much? But there's a bit of a verbal jousting thing going on here. It's not like you take my words this seriously. You've been talking back to me with a nonchalant look on your face, no matter what I said haven't you? I didn't think you'd actually divorce my son, you know. I guess Audrey didn't think I would refuse this offer so firmly. In response to Audrey's bitter excuse, I told her, well, I was just putting up with it. Besides, Jack packed up my stuff and kicked me out without any of my say in it. I lashed out at her angrily, citing each of the things she had done to me. You see, that was just a prank. Yes, it was just a prank. When Audrey still tried to get away with it, I said to her, Prank, huh? I think it's even worse than that. I was so fed up with her that I knew there was nothing I could say to her. I looked down at my arm and saw my watch, which was about to turn one o'clock in the afternoon. My lunch break had been ruined by this futility. Ah, oh, Audrey, are you done now? As I called out to her, she said, what, Mabel? What did you say? She disgusted me with her sweetened voice. Does she think I would give her a good answer with just a sweet voice? Thinking that I would never live up to her expectations, I said, I'm going to hang up now. 
I have another meeting in a few minutes. I have to look over some documents. As I took the phone away from my ear, Audrey kept saying, Wait, wait, Mabel. Hey, Mabel, say something. I could hear Audrey screaming. She also said, Jack, you didn't do it right, and this is what happened. I started to scold my ex-husband. In the end, Audrey probably blames others for everything that doesn't go her way. It made me sick just listening to her, so I mercilessly tapped the end call button and blocked her number. After that, I want to come back to get you, Jack contacted me like that. Since he was too persistent, and it was a good opportunity, I asked my lawyer to compensate him for alimony. Jack's family was maybe weak to lawyers because they immediately paid the alimony in a lump sum. It seems that the money was advanced by my ex-parents-in-law. Because of this, Thomas and Audrey were irritated with Jack and told him every day to find a job and work, which Jack is fed up with. I wonder where the former elites have gone. It seems that Jack returned to his parents' house because he could not pay the rent of the apartment. Jack blames his parents for making him divorced, and it seems that he is using up their pension and retirement savings. Like parents, like child. They seem to be blaming each other for each other's sins and refusing to reflect on their actions. By the way, they're planning to apply for welfare soon. I hope that the government will make an effort to correct Jack's family's personalities while they still can, because it is impossible to be selfish with the government. As for me, my proposal at the business trip was accepted, and a new major contract was signed. I have been promoted again with a higher salary, and I am living a rich bachelorette's life without being tormented by any in-laws or being dependent on my salary from a family member. If I ever have the opportunity to get married again in the future, I would definitely do a background check carefully to avoid a husband who loves his mother or to avoid crazy in-laws.